Just remember this. If you're a one in a million type, there are seven of you in Manhattan alone. Hi, I'm William H. Macy. I'm Edie Falco. I'm Jeff Daniels. I'm Ed Harris. I'm Michael Stuhlbarg. Hi, my name is Mandy Patinkin. Hey, I'm Darren Chris. Hi, I'm David Harbour. I'm Alexis Bledel. My first headshots were done by my dear friend Bill Sage. It really helped to know the guy behind the camera. And they were black and white, kind of standard. Who took my first headshot? I remember my worst headshot. For some reason, he thought if we were stressed, we would take a better picture. So even though it was this big, he had me holding platters of uh, eggs and things that would spill, and I had my feet under the table, I had to do it. It didn't work out so well. I looked more constipated than happy. My first headshot, I had a blank look in my face, uh, kind of dead inside. I didn't get a lot of work from it. I had hair out to here and a joint, and I never got a single job. <laughs> That's the truth. I have kind of an unusual relationship with acting training. Like, I went to SUNY Purchase. I left college without um, the confidence that I entered with. For some people, like me, when, when, I, when we got kind of intellectual about the process of acting, I got lost. I felt a little bit like I no longer knew what I was doing. It took me a while to kind of get back on my feet as far as that was concerned. I think it's like a lot of things. The more hours you spend, you know, you kind of learn something from every job. There's a great book out there called The Outliers, and it says you need 10,000 hours to get good at something. So my suggesting for beginning actors is get on a hit TV show uh, where you get to act every day, especially one that runs nine seasons, and you'll learn everything you need to know about acting. Go to other people's movies, the good ones and the bad ones, because you're gonna learn what not to do. If you're in the theater, stay in it. If you're not in the theater, get in it. There's nothing like doing it. That's the quickest way you're gonna learn. Just throw yourself into a project and you'll learn pretty quick. I take an acting class now, I'm 43. I study method training in New York City. Training is important. And I think training is less about going to classes and immersing yourself with other people to train you to do stuff. It's more about just keeping your eyes open and being uh, inspired and educated by the world around you. I think being a good actor is being a well-rounded person. Like learn another language, learn how to play an instrument. Even if you're not good at it, like the pursuit of that makes your brain work in different ways and helps you understand the world in a much larger spectrum because that's what acting is. First of all, it's a lifelong situation. It's a relentless focus and it's a never ending journey, you know, until you drop dead. Even when you say the word auditioning, I get tense. I mean, it's such a stressful process. I don't know why it has to be that way. Auditioning sucks hippo dick. Everybody knows it and no one will say it. It's the worst part of the business. If there were a way to do it better, I think we would have figured it out so far. Just know your material as well as you can so the camera can see your eyes. When you go to an audition, especially a movie, TV thing, you're gonna get two or three pages of a scene. Somewhere on that two or three pages is a speech or half a page where your character does something that matters. Memorize that part. To have that memorized that you know it means your eyes come up, means you're talking here, means they can imagine this. I did an audition for, I think I was trying to get a manager and I was in a small office and he was behind a desk and I started my monologue, it was a teensy space and in the middle of it, the phone rang. So I stopped and he said, no, no, keep going, keep going. As he was on the phone, I am sitting here doing the monologue to him. He finished his conversation and I'm at that point you know, and he looks at me, he's like, yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, you looked like you were really into it. Thank you. Lots of good stories like that. I've been a very bad auditioner for a lot of years. And the reason why was that my fear would overtake me. And I would think that there was a certain right way to do it. Now that I've developed a little bit of confidence, if I have a certain way that I want to do it, if I want to do scene three first and then go back and do scene one, like that'll help me, I'll do that. If I want the reader to be seated, I will ask the reader to be seated. You're there to solve their problem. You're the answer. Be nice, be a pro, and then solve their problem. I'm the guy. When you're starting out, a good representative is someone who will take you on. Boy, the, the um, getting representation thing is, is so complicated. It took me a long time because for the most part, people don't necessarily want to work with you unless you have some credits to your name. 
and you can't get credits to your name without representation, you know, one of those catch-22 things. I just say work, 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 work. Get a magazine, do plays with friends, do the, you know, the student film from Columbia, just make sure you're always working on something, representation or not. I was very lucky. I went to a, a, a drama school and there was a scene presentation night agents came to see that and I met some people after that and that's how I, I met and found my first agent. I remember that coming out of New York, uh, kids from Yale, NYU and Juilliard had a consortium which is something where agents would go to see you perform and then they would scoop you up. So every year this, these classes of like 60 to 70 kids would just get scooped up by agents and they had no room for a guy like me who went to a school in New Hampshire. For two years, I was just like uh, miserable. Eventually, I kind of lucked into an agent through an ex-girlfriend of mine. I was working for an agency in LA and they had a sister or brother agency in New York. Like I went and I did a monologue from, uh, from The Libertine by Stephen Jeffries and he sort of signed me and sent me out on stuff and the first thing I did was Mercutio and, a park in Tulsa, Oklahoma. When I started out, there were no managers. It was just, you got an agent, and an agent would help you get work. Although my first work, I got on my own, not through an agent. I knocked on doors, I went to auditions. Don't hire a manager and an agent and a business manager and an accountant and a publicist and um ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum Just get a job. <laughs> Act, do your damnedest to do your best. Don't think about all the rest. If you're doing your work and you've studied and learn a craft, some people have great luck and they just land in it and you have it. Good for you. I think it's a craft and I think you really need to learn what to do on the days you don't have it. I think it's important to remember who writes the check and who endorses the check. End of lesson. To memorize my lines, I write them down next to the line. I just write it out. Uh, something about writing it down helps it stick. Then just going over it, saying it out loud, just the repetition of it helps. I have no tricks for memorizing lines. I have learned that I have to do it out loud hundreds and hundreds of times. I have learned that I can do it in about five days if it's a substantial stuff. And I do it out loud. And the out loud part to me is very important because it's how you rehearse. First I'm just learning words and then I'm starting to have thoughts and those thoughts start to percolate and they give me different ideas and I go, that's interesting, I want to hold on to that, that one I want to forget about. So I've worked with other guys, they, they have photographic memories and they go. And they just look at it for a second and they go, God bless them, I mean, that's a gift. I don't have it. I do know that if I've been away from learning or singing and learning songs, it's harder. It'll take me what normally takes me five to seven days. will take me maybe a week and a half, two weeks. And then about three weeks into it, my brain cells start multiplying. Just like, you know, when you're lifting a weight and all of a sudden, you know, it's easier to do X amount of reps and I do it quicker. So I'm no longer a nervous wreck most of the time about remembering. It's a lie. I'm always a nervous wreck about remembering. Memorization is, there's nothing exciting about it. It's drudgery, it's repetition, it's finding words that are similar sometimes. Sometimes it's that technical. Find a sentence with R-E. It's got refuse in it, and then, then later on in the sentence it's require. So just circle the re and the re. So now it's, you know, you know that it's the require and it's the refuse or whatever it is. Just little stepping stones across the river, which is the sentence. And then, then musically, your mouth has to get used to saying these words together right now. Your mouth is memorizing where it's gonna go next. Singers do this all the time. There's this kind of muscle memory for the lips and the cheeks and the mouth, but that comes from the brain being able to memorize it, all words, all syllables, and then run it 100 miles an hour. When you can do that, all of that stuff, then you add in the motivations and all that, but you can slide some of those in too, and then the next thing you know, you don't even think about it, and you're reeling off pages and pages and pages. The more lines, the greater the preparation. I mean, it's kind of disgusting, but I, the tr whatever uh, preparation I do, it's, it takes place on a level that I'm not entirely intellectually aware of. I do something. I find myself reading certain books or stopping in certain stores, and I think, gosh, what am I doing here? And I find out later on, oh, I think that's because of the movie I was working on or whatever. So I, I can't push myself around as far as that stuff is concerned. It's always been a very sort of subterranean process for me. I find what's interesting is to read about not just the person you're playing, if that person is someone. Like say for Kill a Mockingbird, I'm reading all about 1935 Alabama, biographies on Harper Lee. You go to school, you go to grad school, because the people who are really serious about this 
are doing that. Sometimes it's a matter of research about the person. Sometimes it's a whole physical thing that the person's got some particular aspect to them. I remember one of the first things I did in theater was I played a lot in a Tennessee Williams play called Kingdom of Earth. He's a very effeminate character. It was a whole different way of being physically for me. I just allowed myself to work on that and to be that and to change how I felt and not afraid to be, you know, I don't have to be Mr. Macho, you know. Now, I was only 26 when I did that, but it taught me a lot. I don't know, the older I get in this business, the more I realize that the line between the, you and the character is thinner and thinner and thinner. At the end of the day, if they become one, that's a good sign. I would just say that even at this point, I still wake up on days and can't believe that this is what I get to do. I still feel for sure like the luckiest person in the entire world. And if I ever start to take any of it too seriously, it's very easy to kind of bring you back down to the ground that this is, um, you know, the most glorious profession in the world, if it's what you love to do. I'm sure, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, a senator may disagree with me. It has brought me nothing but tremendous joy for my whole life. And just remember that as you're pursuing this, it's the best thing in the world and bring that into every audition you go on, every meeting you have. Just remember what a gift it is to be able to be passionate about this and to get to do it. The thing I'd leave you with is if you want to work on anything, just work on being a better actor. Stardom, you don't have any control over that. You may think you do, but you don't. If you can continue to be a better actor this year than you were last year, then you got a chance of sticking around. I would just say if you really, if this is something you're pursuing as an actor, it's one thing to learn about acting. It's one thing to become a better actor. It's another thing to want to be somebody. You want to be a star or to be da-da-da or to get recognition. If you want to be an actor and learn about acting, that has nothing to do with Hollywood. That has nothing to do with the business. That has to do with you as a human being pursuing something that you fucking care about. And if you get good enough, all that other stuff will take care of itself. Here's my best thing I'd ever heard about acting that my wife said, don't do it unless you have to. Do it if you love it and don't if you don't. Because it's a much more complicated life than anyone will be ever, ever be able to explain to you. It's a uh, humiliating thing to want to do. You will be humiliated, you will feel pain and rejection. I don't think there's anyone, even the stars, the biggest stars that you admire, that don't feel rejection and humiliation for years and years and years. If you have to do it, you will. If you don't have to do it, you won't. And I would add to that, if you are thinking about it or dreaming about it, don't not try it, because time's short, life is short, give it a shot, see what happens. They say Betty Davis made it up, I don't know, but somebody said, what is your advice for a new actor in Hollywood? And she said, take Fountain. That's excellent advice, but since that's already been taken, I would say the only way to be correct in the large things is to be correct in the small things and let the large things go hang. So it's boring, but be on time and learn your lines. Put the rest in God's hands. Be nice, work hard, have compassion, be interested, fucking magical things will happen. If I could leave you with some advice, what would it be? Take a walk by yourself, with yourself. Ask yourself, who am I? What do I want? What do I dream about? Can I try? And tell yourself, yes, I can. Don't give up. Try for as long as you have the energy to try. And then be gracious to yourself, whether you succeed or whether you don't. And be glad you were alive to try. That's the gift of being alive, trying.